Hello guys, I hope you are well. I'm coming at you from Kenya and I am absolutely boiling by the way. It's about 30 degrees outside and I only just turned the aircon on because I've been trying to save energy and I'm sweating from every pore so please excuse me if I progressively get greasier throughout this video. So today I'm doing a QA. and a I asked for your questions on Instagram and I got a whole host of them. I haven't actually looked through them yet so I thought I would just go into this blind and answer as many as I can and give you guys some awesome answers hopefully, fingers crossed. These are all the questions that we have so let's jump straight into it with oh we're getting deep Haley has asked best lessons you've learned in your life so far and what do you think you need to learn next the best lesson that I've learned in life so far is probably not everybody's gonna like you so stop trying to make everybody like you you can't be friends with everyone so stop trying to be everybody's friends <laughs> I'm such a people pleaser so those are like two of the biggest lessons that I've learned and also like things that are worth having don't always come easy and you really need to work your socks off and hard work does pay off like 90% of the time 10% of the time goes a bit down the shitter but 90% of the time you reap the rewards for your hard work so it's always worth putting in the graft and great things never came from comfort zones that's like my main lesson <laughs> main lessons that I've learned and what I need to learn I need to learn more about adulting, you know? I need to learn more about adulting. I feel like I'm slowly starting to adult. I'm 26 years old, I'm learning more and more about finances and pensions and VAT and things like that, but still don't really have a good grasp on it all. So yeah, I feel like adulting is what I need to learn next. So I'll try and document that for you guys. <laughs> Hi, I'd love to hear about your relationship with alcohol. It seems to be very balanced and healthy. This is from Meg. So yes, I think she asked this because the night before I posted asking for questions, I went out and I posted on my Instagram stories doing some shots, having a little boogie in the morning. Yeah, my relationship with alcohol. So I used to be a party girl. Like I used to party, party, party really hard when I was at university and yeah, I'd say my four years of university, mostly my first two years of university, I did party quite hard, I can safely say that. Um, but I feel like that got all the drinking that I needed to do out my system and now I have absolutely no need to get absolutely smashed and I'm just not that fussed by alcohol. So I'd say now I do drink but I probably get drunk drunk, like drunk drunk, maybe like four times a year, three times a year and I'll have a couple of drinks, maybe like two, three times a month. So yeah, I have a very relaxed relationship with alcohol. Don't really drink that much, but I love a G and T. A lady called Sarah has asked and said, I am so inspired by your unrestricted diet while still being a fitspo. God, the word fitspo just made me feel a little bit cringe. I don't I don't think I'm that fitspo. <laughs> um, do you think some of it is genetic or did you? And then I can't hear the rest of, I can't see the rest of her question because the box is quite small on Instagram. So yeah, thank you so much for saying that you find my unrestricted diet inspiring. Um, I have to say, I think there's definitely genetic factors here. I mean, I am six foot two. I am massive and I cannot deny the fact that I am built to be tall and long and lanky. I've never been overweight. I've never been in a larger body. I've always been in a pretty slim body, the largest I've ever got is a size 12 so I mean I've never had to lose a significant amount of weight etc etc so definitely massive genetic factors there but I have built a ton of muscle and that is not something which my genetics lend themselves to because I am so long and lanky um, and that has been from pure hard work so I would say there's genetics which have kept me fairly slim but then I've had to work really hard to actually build muscle and to build strength and to build fitness but that is a slow and steady journey when it comes to my unrestricted diet, I have been restrictive in the past. I have been like a macro counter, calorie counter, tracking person. I did that for a few years. If you follow me for a while, you'll know that. And I think that's all part of the journey for me. Having that time of my life when I was restrictive allows me now to not be restrictive because in those moments when I was tracking, I was learning so much about what is in food, what is a portion of protein, what is a portion of vegetables, what nutrients are in my food. So I know there's a lot of shaming of macro counting and calorie counting now, and I mean, I wouldn't do it now because I don't have the time for that and it's just not that fun. But when I did do it, it taught me so much. So I think the reason I can be unrestrictive now is because I had those experiences in the past and actually learning so much about what was in my food. So now I can just eat whatever the hell I want, obviously within a plant-based 
structure because I am plant-based. How do you have the perfect bikini line, shaving or waxing? Please share your best tips for down there. And this lady, I don't really know her name, but it says the Vita 04. So my bikini line, I just shave, guys. I just shave everywhere. I shave bikini line, I shave legs, I shave armpits, I shave all the areas. But you have to bear in mind that this is my natural hair colour. I am naturally blonde. I am very, very fair. All of my hairs are super fair, super fine. So with shaving, I don't really tend to get like a rash or bumps or anything. So I'm okay with doing that. But I have tons of friends who have done laser and they're more dark skinned and that's worked really, really well for them. So laser could work if you're not somebody who can go with shaving down there, you know. Okay, this is a bit of a cheeky self plug, but this girl has asked uh, Bian Bianca, how do you find really good online eco retreats, online reviews and recommendations? So all of the retreats that I go on, which you see on my social media, are ones which I'm hosting or that I've organised. So <laughs> I've never been on one which somebody else has organised before. I literally just go on the ones which are mine or that I'm a host of or that I've organised in some way. So I can't speak for anybody else's retreats, but not gonna lie, I do organise some good ones. Um, for 2020, I've already sold out hiking Machu Picchu in Peru, hiking the Himalayas in Nepal. They are both sold out and they're both um, responsible travel trips. I'm also launching Bali soon. It's actually on sale now, but I haven't really promoted it. But that's gonna have like an eco-focus with like beach cleans and loads of amazing vegetarian and vegan food. So that's gonna be awesome. And I might try and organise a couple more like eco ones for next year. So stay tuned. They'll probably be UK based, um, maybe another one in Europe. But yeah, I personally just like to organise them myself because then it's always the dream itinerary because it's what I've always wanted to do, you know? So you should definitely come to Bali if you want to come on one. That's my only one I've got next year right now that has spaces on it and I'd love to see you there. Is Kenya safe? I've wanted to go for ages but heard it's not as safe as it used to be. Okay, if you go on the government guidelines for Kenya, it is safe in the vast majority of the country to travel. I think it's just on the northern border, you need to be a little bit careful, but the government guidelines website is always the best place to go for travel guidance. But personally, I have loved Kenya. I have absolutely adored it. The people are incredible, so lovely, so hospitable, so kind. I mean, there's a 200 meter walk from the hotel that I was staying in, the Turtle Sanctuary that I was volunteering in. On that 200 meter walk, I would literally have conversations with four people because people would just stop and talk to me and have a lovely conversation. Like, I have fallen in love with the people in Kenya. They are so amazing. So it's also just a beautiful place. The safari that we did, mind blowing. Camping next to a watering hole surrounded by 400 elephants. What? Kenya is amazing. Please don't let the safety concerns put you off. I just think anywhere in the world right now cannot be safe, you know? Paris had terror attacks. London has terror attacks. Anywhere in the world which you might think is safe might not be safe now or in 2019. So I think look at government guidelines and just be savvy with how you travel and how you act when you travel. As long as you have common sense, I have faith that you're going to be okay. So yeah, I personally have found Kenya to be so safe. I have not felt unsafe at any point during my trip here. I've been here for two weeks and I've loved every second. So I highly recommend Kenya. Eugenia asks, do you ever get any health anxiety as a result of your bowel surgery? And I would say that not really, but yes, a little bit, <laughs> if that makes sense. So um, yeah, if you don't know, I did almost die in January because my bowel decided to twist itself when I was in the Maldives. And I'd say actually for the first like three, four months post-op, I was just like, life's gonna be fine. I'm gonna be okay. Nothing's ever gonna happen again. And then I kind of realized that it really could happen again. And I do have a higher chance of my bowel twisting again. And sometimes now, if I feel like I need cramping in my stomach, which could just be period pain, you know, I start panicking in the back of my head, like it's my bowel, my bowel's twisting, I'm gonna have to go to hospital, I'm gonna have to have surgery, I'm gonna be in bed for two months again. Oh my God, please don't let this happen. And then I have to kind of like talk myself out of that mindset and just relax and remind myself that it's very unlikely that it's my bowel. So stop panicking. Um, so yeah, I do get a little bit of anxiety, but only if I get like cramping in the lower right hand part of my abdomen, which is where it twisted before. Um, that is also an area that I get cramps um, in for PMS. So I just have to kind of reassure myself that it might be PMS, it might be something else. But um, yeah, I think it's fairly natural when something that big happens to you to get a little bit anxious and to worry it's gonna happen again. So 
I just really try and talk myself out of that mindset and remind myself that it's not a super strong likelihood and you cannot live your life in fear. I cannot live my life in fear. I have to just live confidently and positively and not be scared to do things in case my bowel twists. Because what if it never twists again and then I've lived my whole life in fear, you know? I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste any time and energy. <laughs> okay, next question is, favorite tall brand for jeans? I get this question all the time. So I have to be really, really, really honest with you and tell you that the jeans that I buy are all from a fast fashion brand, not very sustainable of me, um, but they're from Topshop Tall and that's because that's the only place that I can get jeans which reach my ankles. I have not found anywhere else. I've tried Levi's, I've tried everything. People DM me suggestions all the time. I go and try them. They never reach my ankles. I have a 37 inch inside leg. I am a daddy long legs basically. So I have to go to Topshop to get jeans. But the main thing that I try and do is if I'm gonna go and get jeans from a fast fashion brand like Topshop, is just make sure that I only buy them when I need them. And I only buy ones which I know I'm gonna wear to death and which bring me joy. They spark joy, you know, a little bit of Marie Kondo there with my jeans. So they spark joy in me. But yeah, I want to be honest with you guys. I do only get my jeans from a fast fashion brand. I get them from Topshop because I am long and that makes shopping for jeans very awkward. <laughs> Would you label yourself as plant-based or vegan? That is a very good question. And it's something which I have come to a decision about recently. I am gonna call myself plant-based because technically I'm not actually vegan. Like I'm really not. I still buy like secondhand leather. And also like when I'm traveling, sometimes I just let food slide. When I'm at home, I'm pretty much like on it, like vegan. I'm the vegan queen when I'm at home. But when I'm traveling, sometimes things just get a bit awkward and it gets difficult and you just have to let things slide. So yeah, I never eat meat, like just throwing that out there. This girl is always 100% vegetarian. But sometimes I just let things slide when I'm traveling and it absolutely terrifies me to say that. I don't know why it terrifies me so much. I just don't want the vegan police to come after me and like light their fires and chase me down the street. But I would rather be honest with you guys and just kind of release that pressure on myself to be perfect because I'm, I'm just not. I'm really not. So yeah, I'd rather not call myself vegan because there's an element of perfection which comes with that term. And I am just in absolutely no way perfect so I would definitely call myself plant-based and yeah that's where I'm at and that's where I feel comfortable and I make choices which in myself I feel ethically and sustainably content with those choices you know and I think that's the most important thing like you feeling happy with the choices that you're making and if I choose to let some things slide every so often like if my boyfriend buys a croissant in Paris and it's a regular croissant and I want a mouthful of it I might just let myself have a mouthful of that croissant, you know? So yeah, please don't come and burn me at the stake, vegans. I am basically vegan, but not all the time. So I'm plant-based. Yeah, that's what I'm going to call myself, okay? Oh my god, I'm so scared about this. I'm going to get hate comments. Ah. All right, let's do one last question. And this question is your biggest insecurity and your biggest strength. And that is from Theo, which I'm assuming means Fiona. So my biggest insecurity would be i just just don't like it when people don't like me do you know what i mean i'm just not happy when people don't like me i'm such a people pleaser and i'm really trying to learn that lesson that i told you earlier that not everybody's gonna like you i'm really trying to learn that lesson so yeah i've realized that my biggest insecurity is people not liking me, that I'm not a good friend, that I'm not a good human. I really want to be a good human. I want to be a good person. I want people to like me and I want to leave a positive lasting impression on this planet. And I put a lot of pressure on myself to be a good human and for people to like me. And if they don't, and if I don't think I'm being good enough, then yeah, I beat myself up about it. So, and so my biggest insecurity is not being liked not being a good friend not being a good human that sort of vibe um, and then i'd say my biggest strength would be my motivation to work like i will happily work all hours of the day i will work seven days a week i'll work weekends like i am so motivated i have endless motivation um mostly motivation to work sometimes my motivation for working out can ebb and flow but my motivation to work like in an office on a laptop on a desk 
I got that. I've got so much motivation. I've got buckets of the stuff. So yeah, I'm good at motivating myself to work, motivating myself to work out. Eh, sometimes that motivation wavers. <laughs> Anyway, I really, really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this q and I loved chatting to you. If you did like it, please give it a cheeky thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you guys here again soon. So yeah, make sure you leave a comment because that's my favourite thing. You guys know that. All right, have an amazing day. I love you loads. Have a good one. Goodbye.